10 years of cumulative momentum, and it had gone from complete disaster to you know, a thousand turns on the flywheel. And what happened was, really the question was, if we extend out into the future, where this flywheel could go, and then if we simply make the commitment to make it go there, so it's really an, an, an extension, an imaginative extension from your empirical experience of what's actually already worked. And so what we generally found is exactly that pattern. Well, my, when my wife set her goal to win the Ironman, which she did in 1985, it didn't come out of the blue. She had accumulated a series of, of, of race successes that gave her confidence and then based on those race successes, she said, how far can I take this? Well, if I quit my job, turn down all my graduate school entries, decide to commit my life to this, perhaps I could win the Ironman. So it was an extension of success and how far it could go as opposed to just an envisioned thing. And so that idea of let's look at our empirical success, explain why we've been successful, and then think about how far it could take us, that's generally how it happened. Um, my own has to do with trying to be at least somewhat of use to the world. I'll come back to that at the end. <laughs> yes? What's on your stop doing list? What's on your stop doing list? Yeah, uh, the stop doing list is something that uh, I use a lot. By the way, uh, every year when you sit down and do your priorities, remember if you have more than three priorities, you don't have any. For every to-do, you have to have a corresponding not to-do. In the recent time, for me, um, my stop doing, uh, one, uh, and, uh, uh, is, and this is the nature of being kind of the creator of your own system, I had to really stop uh, sending emails when I was upset. <laughs> and, uh, and, and creating unnecessary flywheels. And part of my stop doing is to stop being online when I'm actually doing work. Uh, to, and, 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 and to recognize that if I have something that doesn't go quite right and I send an email to my people and I go, Bruh! well then the whole system's gonna go Bruh! very dysfunctional. So basically, any communication that's relevant other than just a simple transaction, I will not do by email. And I will not do unnecessary uh, uh, fire alarms, and just sort of stand back and actually breathe and have conversations. That was a very, very important to stop doing. And especially since about half the emails I had sent did more damage than good, not because I said anything awful, but just because it would shock the system when it wasn't needed to be a shock to the system. Uh, a second stop doing is um, I, uh, I stopped doing anything that would not be creative work between breakfast and noon. Because what I've learned about create, creative work is that it's a cumulative process and you can't just sort of say, okay, now I'm just gonna go be creative. You don't know, it's like, it's like if you're a runner, you never know if you're gonna have a good training day or a bad training day, so you gotta train a lot. And if you're always like, I'm only gonna run hard when I feel good, you'll never really have great days. So what, I, what I've done is I said, from breakfast till noon on, on most days, except the day when I'm teaching or something, Everything is on the stop doing list except creative work. And if I do that every day, hopefully something will happen. <laughs> yes? Uh, in effort to start with a blank canvas to build our masterpiece, we would like to know, would you prefer Bordeaux or Merlot? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Merlot. Thank you. All right. Very good. Is that the question? We actually had the same question, so. Okay, great. Over here. Um, it's been a while since I read Good to Great, yep. and I can't remember if um, of any of the great companies there was a financial company. Mm -hmm. So we want to ask, with all the turbulence from the financial sector, did you identify a company as a great company from that world, and who was it? Yeah. Uh, there are actually two in Good to Great that were financial. And what's very interesting is how one of them is still really strong today, and the other has essentially uh, gone to very close to stage five. Uh, the one that is uh, that was very uh, is still very strong was Wells Fargo. Uh, 